Welcome back to our virtual classroom, Real Repairs for Real Customers. As I mentioned in a previous video, I've been looking for door panel repairs to feature on the channel in response to questions from colleagues in the uh, automotive field. And so today I do have a complete video of a door panel, but we're also going to look at some other door panel repair scenarios. Uh, so we can get a good overview of what to expect on door panels. So we'll discover that a door panel is not just a door panel and a vinyl repair is not just a vinyl repair. So there's a lot bundled up here in this session. So buckle up, let's get to work. a brief answer to a question on the foam steering wheels and that question is what do you do when there's material missing and there's a deep hole like this normally we're using a gray scuff pad and acetone to restore the contour on the steering and it may take a leap of faith on your part but if you bear down with successive applications of acetone and the gray scuff pad, you can wear this steering down to a nice contour. Yes, it will be thinner here in this area, but it will be graduated around the curvature of the steering wheel. In fact, some steering wheels are made fatter in some areas and thinner in others. It will take all the effort you have to get this down to this point. But the beauty of this is you've had to use no fillers and all you've had to do is resurface the steering wheel and retexture. So I think this is as fast as you're going to get back to that factory look. Now this door panel was damaged by a glass installer. So I like to document the progress with a couple of pictures so that the installer has a record of it. We know this is vinyl because it responded to the heat that we applied and all of those raised spots laid down. The only thing that did not lie down properly is where there were actually cuts in the vinyl. So that's why I took this picture so that they could see that they actually cut the vinyl, not just wrinkled it. We do learn a good deal from this picture, however. As is typical with the foam-backed vinyls, we did get some grain imprinted where we just pushed our random grain pad down to flatten it. But notice that the heat from the heat gun also bled the grain away from the original vinyl. That means that while we're using the heat method, we will always have this ring around our repair. This little area where the vinyl is not hot enough to be grained, but yet it is hot enough to bleed the existing texture away. Therefore, we're going to have to use a cold graining method to blend this panel. Now you wouldn't do this, but hypothetically, you could spray with a canned spray texture. That would look like poo, and no one's going to be happy with that. You might be happy with it, but certainly no one else is. No one else is going to be happy with your poo. That's a fact of life, isn't it? So you could pass that on to your grandchildren and create yourself quite a legacy with that one. Instead, we need to create a texture. We need to build a texture that will work. In fact, we're going to do just that on a BMW door panel in just a bit. So this is not your uncle's vinyl repair, is it? Now in our last video, in our interview, Brett set the tone 
for this kind of repair. Because here, the customer is wanting a new door panel. They are upset, and we have to overcome that emotion. Also, the glass installer does not want to pay for a new door panel because they can be, what, anywhere from 500, 1500 or more. So he's looking to save some money. Now, if he said that he's going to have the door panel repaired, well, you have to overcome that skepticism on the part of the car owner, too, because they don't want a repaired door panel. So it would be nice to have a perfect repair, but I don't think I've ever done a perfect repair, except maybe by accident. So what do we need here? We need a repair that's convincing. It has to look convincingly like a new panel. Convincing enough to overcome that hurdle that is the car owner's emotions. Convincing enough that they will sign and authenticate that invoice that you're going to send to the glass installer. And the glass installer gets this photograph for his records, and he's relieved too. We're doing a walk around for our next door panels to repair. These are on a brand new car that just went over to the window tint shop and they have burned up the door panels. To be sure, this lady wants brand new door panels. Of course, a pre-inspection walk around with the video is a good idea for any retail job. We can see what the heat gun did to the door panel, so the heat gun repair is out of the question. Obviously, then, this is an unbacked vinyl, which means that it's the same vinyl that they would use in shrink tubing. The more the vinyl shrinks, the bigger the hole. So for this damage, I used a clear, flexible gel because it's stronger than the black, but the black gel I apply in dots, like freckles, to get the texture started. Then I can sand that texture with 400, and I have a good starting texture now upon which to get a spray texture blended. In our last interview, Mike stressed the importance of masking, maybe a little over-masking even, since we're just blending a small spot here, but it's a brand new car. We want to stay that way. Again, we want to be convincing because this lady wants a new door panel here. What was good about this one is that with the window up, you can't see anything was the matter with it. This corner was touch and go, and if I did any more than that, I would have gotten trouble. I created a pretexture with the black gel and a probe, and then spray textured without doing anything further, and thankfully that did the trick. Now, I was debating for quite some time whether to even use this next BMW door panel repair because, as you can see, there's a drop of sweat on the lens. This was in the middle of the summer when it was scorching hot. And I can't see in the viewfinder anyway when the sun is full out, so I didn't know what I was filming, just pointing the camera in that direction. So um, I still think that we can learn something from this door panel, so forgive me for the blur in the lens. When it looks like vinyl, but doesn't respond to heat, that's a good indicator that it's likely a urethane, a polyurethane, which is not a thermoplastic. Not to be confused with TPU, which is, however, with PU, often we short the polyurethane designation to just urethane, and that is not meltable, not workable. You can see the same thing built up on this Cadillac door panel. So we have to cut this off. We have to cut it away or it will forever be built up inside our repair. And we encounter the same kind of urethane dilemma on these suburban door panels. If this was vinyl, we would know because the heat gun would erase all of these marks. But since it's urethane, heat doesn't affect it whatsoever. So we cannot erase these marks and we would not be able to regranite using the heat transfer method. 
And as a side note, I really like this color in these Chevys. You can make it with 145 brown and 190 purple. So easy to make and such a regal color. So back to our BMW, I want to cut away all of this buildup urethane. Now my hat's going to be in the way through this, unfortunately, sorry about that. It is so typical of the urethane to break and then ball up and get clumped up with the adhesive that was holding it to the fabric. This is the same thing they call bonded leather when there's no leather there. How they get away with that, I have no idea. And even though it doesn't melt like vinyl does, we are going to use our heat cured vinyl repair compound as a structural filler in this void. Of course, we want to properly prep with our degreaser and our alcohol. Likely you have a variety of vinyl repair compounds to pick from uh, to do this job. But what a lot of techs are doing is they're taking a thicker compound to do the initial filling and the initial firm structural part of it. And then they'll pick another compound that uh, they feel will grain better and use that maybe a thinner, more grainable compound for the final step. And on the Cadillac that we viewed earlier, you can see that we've cut all the excess away. And along with our graining pad, we've got our foam backer that lets us push down real hard and get that contour. So how far did our first application take us? Because we know we typically have to use three or four layers. Well, let's put color on here and let's see. Of course, as expected, we have to go again. And checking progress. So we want to remove the loose uh, plasticizer from the surface in preparation for our spray grain. Because we're going to be spraying from the gun at low pressure, we will have large droplets and they can fall even straight down at your feet sometimes. So it's good to do some extra masking down below. And here we're just getting a starter texture going. So what I would suggest is to start with a large texture. Large will mean that it's also wide. It can be tall, taller than you want, but if it's wide, that's a good start. We can dry it down and then we can sand the tops off with 400. So starting extra wide on the uh, base texture can be a good thing. It might take a leap of faith for you to get a real heavy texture going at the beginning, but then as you sand it, you'll discover that it does provide for a really neat base. And then with the subsequent textures, you can increase the air pressure and make them a little bit more moderate in size. Of course, that's just a generalization and uh, you'll have to ascertain, use good judgment for any repair, what's required for that repair. Now into my dye, I have also added plastic primer because it cures more solidly, more rigid, and it will stand up better than to sanding. 
So I'll sand in one direction only at first, just so that I don't grab something and pull it out. Then we can use a rag with some alcohol, not fully wet, just damp, as a tack cloth to get off all the sanding dust. So then for the final texture, on this particular panel, I don't want the texture to be flattened on the top, so I want to have a little bit of a rounded appearance on top. It makes for a little smoother uh, hand also. And you can see I'm blending it out a little bit further. That's the secret, isn't it? This vehicle is for a used car lot, but once we have the method down, it's just as easy to do this same method for wholesale or for retail. And as a final touch, we can ascertain what kind of general sheen that we want overall. And that will help bring everything together. And fortunately for our team, I took the final picture with my cell phone camera. And how did the Cadillac turn out? Maybe not quite as good, but uh, hey, they'll like it. And let's close out with a little tech tip about this kind of key fob. Of course, when they go bad, the first thing you'd like to check is the battery. With a new battery, the next thing you'd like to check has to do with these rubber buttons. The underside of the rubber buttons contains an electrically conductive coating. If that coating is worn off through use, then it will not complete the circuit on the circuit board. So each button would connect the two traces you see here on the board. You can test the functions by tapping with a conductive tool like I'm doing here. So if your doors lock and unlock, your trunk opens and the horn beeps, your unit is good. In most cases, the simple test will save you a lot of money because you do not need to buy a completely new expensive key fob and have that programmed. You can simply buy the replacement case, which contains the new rubber buttons with the new conductive surface. And that is only a couple of dollars. And as always, thank you for your interest in better repairs, and we'd look to see you on the next video.